Dr. Scott Stevens here, continuing with our statistics videos. This one is about contingency tables and about pivot tables in Excel and how we can use them to make our contingency table work a lot easier. The example that I've chosen to work with today is actually one about gender discrimination, a fairly hot button topic. And before I get started with that, there are three things that I want to tell you about what we're doing here. The first one is that this data is made up for purposes of this demonstration. It's not real data. I've made it up because it brings several interesting questions to light about how we analyze data and what questions we should ask, which is really the second point. That is, statistics can give you numbers to answer some questions, but you have to ask the right question. Sometimes that's more subtle than you might think. In particular, for example, what would we mean to say that there is gender discrimination in admitting these students to a particular school? That's the data that we've got. We have 163 applicants. Each of them applied to one of two schools, either school A or school B. And we've recorded that school, what the gender of the person applying is, and then the result of whether or not they were selected for admission to that school. What would give us evidence that there was gender discrimination going on? You might think that question's obvious, but it's actually more subtle than you might think. Here's the one that we're going to use today, which probably matches fairly closely with the kind of thing you might be thinking about. In this exercise, we're going to assume that there's a potential for sexual discrimination if, in the same circumstances, a woman and a man have different chances of succeeding. Obviously, that definition might not be right for all cases. For example, a woman has a higher chance of giving birth to a baby than a man does. That doesn't mean that there's sexual discrimination going on. But at a university, students are being accepted by a choice of the university, yes or no. Yes, it's possible that one set of students of one gender might be higher qualified than another. But without seeing evidence of that, we have no reason to believe that ahead of time. So this is the standard we're going to use to see if we need to dig deeper. All right. I'd like to make a table, and what this table is going to be talking about is what's a person's gender and what chance do they have of getting accepted. There are two different schools that I could talk about here, but I'll, I'll fold the schools into the discussion in just a few minutes. I want to summarize all the data which is in this big long table here, and I'll do that using the technique of a pivot table, a technique I talked about earlier in an earlier video. Um, for histograms. So let me show you how we do that. Remember that every column has to have a name to do a pivot table. We already have that. I'll highlight all of the data and then I will tell Excel under the insert menu to insert a pivot table. It asks me where I want it. I'll say put it on a new sheet and here we go. Let me magnify the view a little bit so we can see more easily what's going on. Right now we see nothing in the table. We're going to build what we want in the table from these entries over here. There are four columns. I have four names. I want to figure out how likely a person of a given gender is to be accepted. So I'm going to put gender in the rows and admitted in the columns. I could put them the other way around. It wouldn't matter. The table would still work. But as you can see, I now have a table which specifies gender, male or female, and whether or not you get in. Most of us are used to saying yes before no, so I'll grab this one and drag it over to be the left column so that I can put them in the order which seems more natural to me, yes and no. There's no data currently in the table. I want to know how many people fall into each category. So I'm going to put something in this values box, and it turns out it really doesn't matter which of these I pick as long as it's something that every single applicant has a value for. It turns out in this table that they all have values for everything, so I'll just pick applicant number, although any of the other ones would have been fine too. It currently is a sum of applicants, that is, it's adding up the numbers of everybody. I don't want that. I just want to know how many people fall in the category. So I've left-clicked, chosen Value Field Settings, and then I'm going to choose Count from the list, as I did before in an earlier video. Now I can see there are 163 people total, 81 women and 82 men. Also out of those people, 89 of them were accepted by the college to which they applied, 74 were rejected. Again, that adds up to 183. So these outer rows and columns are totals, and that's the grand total there. These numbers here, these four, indicate what the breakdown is by cross-indexing row and column. Of the 163 people, 48 were women who, yes, were admitted, while 41 were men who, no, were not admitted, and so on. These are counts, which is nice, but if I'm looking for evidence of discrimination, probably a more relevant question isn't how many people, but what fraction of people got in. I could talk about what fraction of all students fall in each category. If I wanted the fraction of all students, I'd be taking all the numbers in this table and dividing them by the total number of students, which is 163. I'd know that because I'm saying of all students. Let me show you how we'd do that. 
I could do it by hand by taking this table here okay, and copying it somewhere else so I can do some work with it, perhaps here for example. I'll put some labels so you know what's going on. This is yes, this is no, and this is total. And in the rows, this is female, and this is male, and again, this is total. Okay. These tables are really sometimes called and tables, or joint tables, both of the tables that I've built so far, because they're saying about people who are women and accepted. But I don't want just this table. I want a kind which tells me what fraction of all students fall into each category. So let me make one more copy of this table. And copy it over here. Uh, I'll wipe the numbers out from inside it because these are supposed to be fractions of the whole, percentages. For example, what fraction of people are women and were accepted? Well, there are 48 such people, and I'm dividing by the total number of people, 163, because I'm asking the fraction of all students, and that comes out to be 0.2945. About 29% of all students are women who were accepted. I can save myself some typing and use this formula over and over by changing that D12 on the bottom to dollar sign D dollar sign 12. That means when I copy this formula to new cells, the thing I'm dividing by, cell D12, shouldn't change. Every calculation will be dividing by 163. So when I drag it all over all these cells, for example, this one is now that cell over 163. Again, this outer row and outer column, I'll put them in red here, are row and column totals. So I can see that 49% of my applicants were female, 50% male, just about even, while 54% uh, of applicants were accepted and 45% were rejected. A bit more than half were accepted. 100% of the people fall into some category. Notice that these add to one and these add to one. And of course the numbers in this column add to this. Again, this is an and table. But the question that we're really interested in is whether things are different for men or for women. I'd like to know if you are a woman, what's your chance of being accepted? If you are a man, what's your chance of being accepted? How would we do that? Well, the calculation would be, what's the chance of being a woman who's accepted? There are 81 women. 48 of those women were accepted. That means the chance of being a woman who is accepted is 48 divided by 81. That's about 60%. This is the chance of a woman being accepted. Okay. Women get in about 81% of the time. And I could do the same kind of calculation to figure out the chances for everybody. The chance of a man being accepted, for example, is 41 over 82. And that comes out to be 50%. So overall, if there's evidence for discrimination, it seems to be going the other direction. 59% of women got accepted, while only 50% of men got accepted. But let's take a closer look. In doing so, I'm going to actually let Excel do the calculations that I did down here in this part of the chart because it's perfectly capable of doing so. I can ask this for relative frequencies. I can do it this way. Click inside my pivot table, go to this values thing and left click, then choose value field settings and go to the other tab which says show values as. On the pull down menu, I'm going to say percent of grand total. The numbers that appear near now are the fraction of everybody that falls into a category. And you'll see that this table here is exactly the same as the one that we created by hand down here. So that's nice. But what we'd like to know now is, given that you're a woman, or given that you're a man, how likely is it that you succeed? I'll go to the same place, left click, click Value Field Settings, click Vote Show Values Apps, and this time go to Percent of Row Total, because I want to know what fraction of women fall into each category? What fraction of men fall into each category? And I can see, as I computed down here, that 59% of women were accepted, while 50% of men were accepted. In other words, women are about 9% more likely to be accepted than men overall. So as I said, if there's discrimination, it seems to be going in the other direction, that women have the better part of it. But maybe we should look more carefully. There were two different schools, remember, and I can actually ask the pivot table to look at only one at a time. I'm going to grab school here and bring it down to the filters menu and that allows me to specify which school I'm talking about. Right now we're talking about all schools and as you can see as we said women are more likely than men to be admitted. But let's look at just one school. Let's look at school A. Alright, which gender seems to be favored at school A? Hopefully you said men. The success rate of men at school A is about a 40% admission rate. For women, it's about 12% lower, about 28%. Apparently, school A is pretty tough to get in. A lot more people are rejected than accepted, but that's especially true for women. 
All right, so if we were talking about discrimination based on a difference between the two genders, we'd see possible evidence of discrimination against women at school A. Well, what happens at school B? Here are the same numbers for school B. Who seems to be favored at school B, men or women? Well, the situation at school B looks better for both genders, a 70% acceptance rate for women, an 80% acceptance rate for men, but again, men are preferentially accepted over women. So, did you hear what we just got? If we're talking about school B, men seem to have the best of it. If we're talking about school A, that's true too. But if we put them together, the exact same numbers, and look at the two schools together, we find that women have a higher acceptance rate than men. So, which is it? Is there discrimination against men? Against women? Both? Neither? It's not obvious, is it? This is something called Simpson's Paradox, this kind of mathematical problem. And it's arising in this case because the way I created the problem was to have two schools, one which was pretty darn hard to get in, and one which was pretty easy to get in. And the way that I set it up, in this particular example, men were more likely to apply to the hard school and women were more likely to apply to the easy school. The consequence was that even though in both schools men ended up having a higher success rate than women, most of the women ended up going where the overall success rate was higher. So the chance of a woman succeeding in this case was higher than that of a man. But it does bring up interesting questions about whether we have any evidence for um, sexual discrimination based on data that we see that looks like this. What would you say? It might be worth a discussion.